Good afternoon, this is a Shaman Oracle reading for the sign of Capricorn. Hello Capricorn, I hope you are well. And before I start, let me quickly explain the new card decks that I'm using here, okay? On the left is the Wild Offering Oracle card. It's about a short message for the day. Or whenever you get to hear this message, then you can use it as the guidance for the day. Okay? Next is the Moonology card deck. And the Moonology card deck has different cards in categories of new moon, full moon, special moons, and gives also each zodiac sign a new moon card and a full moon card. Next comes the Celtic plant oracle card. It's about flowers, trees and also herbs that were used in Celtic life. And lastly there is the Celtic shaman's pack and the Celtic shaman's pack has categories like vision cards movers, empowerers, the worlds, the elements, the totem beasts and the shapers. And it is a very dreamlike card deck with lots of strange stories, different worlds and gives us an insight into the Celtic uh, imaginary life. Okay? So, let me start Capricorn. The wild offering card for you is called Spaciousness. And the card Spaciousness reads, What do I no longer need? Help me God to release whatever people, places or things train my vital essence. Show me what fill me with enthusiasm and joy. So that's the message. Now we come to the Moonology card for you Capricorn. And it is the new moon in Aquarius. This card came out for you. And the card says bring love into the situation. The zodiac sign Aquarius is all about progress and modern conceptions. So this is the time to move forward. The new moon in Aquarius means no looking back. Change is on its way and it could come quickly. Whether you get a ch change you want depends both on whether you believe you can have it and how much you are relying on others to bring it to you. This card comes with the suggestion that you may need to do things independently on your very own. But be loving, says the card, not too pragmatic and so do that. Be loving, not too pragmatic to get the good advice. Okay? Time may be of the essence when this card comes up. Aquarian energy has an electric feel to it. Certainly there is a sense that you need to let go of the past and move towards your future as soon as possible. The attune to the moon advice is explore the idea that it is not what you know but whom you know. And an additional meaning of the card is you need to be more detached from this situation. Thinking outside the box will bring the solution. More pragmatism is called for and improve your karma by doing some charitable work. The teaching of the card is 
Aquarius is the sign of invention, modern advances and technology, and also the sign of humanity. This energy is a little brittle because it is individual, even scientific, and relatively emotionally detached. Many people think Aquarius is a water sign because the Aquarius symbol is the water bearer, but it is actually an air sign and is far more about intellect than the emotional water sign. This card, whenever it is appearing in your reading Capricorn or when you actually hear about the reading, then you are advised to drop your usual conventions so you benefit best from getting this card. The Celtic plant you got Capricorn is hazelnut. I love hazelnut in chocolate and cakes. Mmm, delicious. I like nuts anyway. So, what is there to learn about the plant with regard to Celtic life? Hazelnut, hazelnut is one of the nine sacred Celtic trees. Often placed the ninth in the tree Ockham. Hazelnuts are a symbol of prosperity, luck, wisdom, and protection. Nine is also a sacred number in magical workings, and traditionally, witches' letters have knots in either three, nine, or thirteen. The poet W. B. Yeats wrote about a hazel. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head. The hazel might be said to be the quintessential Celtic tree because of its legendary position at the heart of the other world. Here nine magic hazel trees hang over the well of wisdom and drop their purple nuts into the water. In some accounts, the hazelnuts cause bubbles of mystic inspiration to form on the surface of the streams that flow down from the well. And in others, the salmon of knowledge and inspiration eat the nuts and send the husks floating downstream. Those that eat the nuts or eat the salmon gain poetic and prophetic powers. Many early Irish tales describe poets and seers as gaining nuts of wisdom, which is most likely a metaphor for such heightened states of consciousness. Although the ones taking this metaphor more likely argued that this expression could refer to a potent brew made from hazel that had psychotropic effects. As to this theory, there are numerous references to Scottish Scottish to Scottish druids eating hazelnuts to gain prophetic powers. Hazelwoods frequently figure in the sacred landscape of Ireland, so Hazel, the son of Hazel, the son of Plough, and the son of the Sun supposedly divided the island into three so that the country was said to be under the plough, the sun or the hazel, for these were the things they put above all other. Terra, the chief seat of the kingship in Ireland, was built 
near a hazelwood and the great monastery of clonard was established in what must have once been a sacred pagan place known as the wood of the white hazel ross finquil in scotland a hazel grove was called colton and various places today are called colton and are associated with entrances to the other world one being the famous cold hill between leith and edinburgh which was probably still being used for magical gatherings in the 17th century there is even a legend that has saint joseph of arimathea built the original abbey of glastonbury from hurdles of hazel branches the hazel's connection with the well of wisdom is visibly recalled by the tree's frequent presence at holy wells throughout britain and ireland where pilgrims still continue to festoon its branches with votive offerings in the form of pieces of glass. The Hazel's association with wisdom extends to other cultures of the ancient world. In Norse mythology, it was known as the Tree of Knowledge and was sacred to the sun god Thor. The Romans held it sacred to the planet ruler Mercury, who, especially in his Greek form, Hermes, was the personification of intelligence. Hermes' magic rod may have been made of hazelwood. In legend and folklore, the hazel, along with the apple and hawthorn, is a tree often found at a border between the worlds where magical things may happen in the scots ballad hindatin is the title and the name of a spirit who guards the hazels of a sacred tree druid wands were made from the hazelwood until quite recently lovers roasted hazelnuts over fires at halloween which was also known as a nut crack night and the way the nuts burned either steadily together or flying apart foretold the relationship of the lovers in the coming year this custom is an example of the connection between hazels and love which is very ancient i think it's cute at one point hazelnuts were used as a sign of fertility in the same way today one uses rice or confetti to greet newlyweds it is also said that when one uses a shield made of hazel hazelwood one becomes invisible in <laughs> In battle, one becomes invisible in battle. Now I understand why I love hazelnuts. <laughs> Just kidding. Fi finally, Capricorn, we come to the Celtic shaman's pack and your card, the Lady of the Cauldron. The Lady of the Cauldron belongs to the so-called Shaper's card. On the card, a female figure arises from the midst of cauldron. She holds two serpents, which meet and entwine above her head. To the one side of the cauldron is a hen, and to the other side is a bee. Both are sacred creatures, and there is also in the middle of, of the uh, figure a heart, that trips blood <coughs> into the vessel. 
To seek inspiration is also to seek initiation. The Lady of the Cauldron, whether she is called Seridwen or something else, offers both rebirth and the opening of the doors to inner consciousness and the deeper awareness of the part we each play in the pattern of creation. The lore here is Seridwen's name probably means crooked woman, crooked woman, and she is generally presented as a type of divine hag or mountain mother who from her apron, which is her womb, lets fall huge stones which later become known as mountains. Her hack-like aspect is, at its most extreme, represented in Highland folklore as a kind of wild natural force, which, when overcome by the sunlight and new grass of spring, quote, flies into a terrible temper and disappears in a whirling cloud of angry passion. Quote end. However, it is in her guise as keeper of the cauldron of inspiration that she is best known. In the story of Talisin, she is the mother of two children, a daughter who is the fairest woman in the world and a son who is so hideous that no one can bear to look at him. The mother decides to brew a drink of inspiration to her help her son out and also to make him wise. And she employs a young helper named Quirin to keep the cauldron bubbling. While she leaves and collects some herbs, Three hot splashes hit Quian's hand, which he at once puts in his mouth, thus imbibing the wisdom of the cauldron. After a wild chase in which he takes on various animal forms, he is finally consumed by Seridwen, the mother who now is in the form of a hen, and later is reborn from her womb as the wondrous child Talisin. Since this is clearly an initiation sequence, it is not hard to see in the brew of inspiration a reference to a mind-altering drink used by shamans to this day. Seridwen, as its maker and as keeper of the cauldron, is therefore an initiator. This makes her status as a goddess clear, as in the many other references, both in poetry and lore. Here she is also associated with pigs, linked with wisdom, inner strength and riches, and she is sometimes called a soul goddess. She is represented in the card image by a bee, one of the creatures dropped by Henwen or Old White One in her flight from Arthur's Various. Now take a journey, Capricorn, advises the card. Travel to a cave where there is a fire burning at the entrance. Call out your name and state that you have come in search of the drink of divine inspiration. If an answer comes from within, then enter the cave. If there is no answer coming, return to normal consciousness and make this journey again at another time. If invited to enter, Walk past the fire 
and go into the heart of the cave. On every wall are carved spirals and walls in intricate mazes. In the center of the cave stands a blackened iron cauldron. Behind it sits the lady of the cauldron, Saridwen herself. Talk with her about your current state of being, problems and future intentions. If she believes that you may be ready, she will offer you a drink, and this may well generate a journey within a journey. If so, it will be the utmost importance to your future. You are standing in the place of Talisin, and as with his own experiences, you may pass through several shapes before finding a form and meaning that is appropriate. Return in time and record everything that you have learned. Wow Capricorn, these stories from the Celtic Shaman's Pack, they are strange, right? But they are fun nevertheless. So try that. Try that and see what forms you receive while you do that. Okay, Capricorn? Enjoy the ride. Thank you for listening and coming by again. And I wish you a wonderful Tuesday and a good week ahead. And Capricorn, I hope you come back next time when I have another shaman reading, maybe more the old kind. Okay? So come back. I wish you all the best and goodbye.